We're joined now by Chris Christie, the former governor of New Jersey, Rahm Emanuel, the former mayor of Chicago, ABC News contributor Yvette Simpson, and Republican strategist Sarah Fagan. Hurricane Laura is making landfall soon. Governor Christie, we've heard that President Trump is planning on delivering his speech as expected. Is it your opinion, depending on the disaster, that he should delay? Well, I think what he should consider is what he's going to do during the day tomorrow at a minimum. Uh, let's see what happens with the storm tonight. And I think it would be smart for the president to lean into this. What American people, I think, want to see more than anything else, Lindsay, in a moment like this, if it turns out as bad as it's being forecast, is for the president to be the person who goes down there and provides focus and strength to leadership and then turns the problem with their help over to the governors to manage. Hopefully the president will consider that tomorrow if this disaster turns out to be as bad as we're, we're forecasting right now. Tonight we heard Vice President Pence address the unrest in Wisconsin calling for an end to the violence stemming from protesters. Yvette, was this a sufficient enough response to the shooting of Jacob Blake? No. I mean, he didn't even mention Jacob Blake's name. And he spent more time talking about the quote-unquote violence of protesters rather than the fact that a lot of the violence has either been brought on by the folks who were supposed to bring peace, as we saw in Portland, or people like Kyle Rittenhouse, who was empowered by police officers with his gun and act after shooting protesters was allowed to go home. I mean, it, 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 and even though folks said he just shot three people, he was able to go home. Jacob Blake didn't have a gun and he was not allowed to go home. He was, he was shot in the back by officers. Sarah, would you say that the president should have already addressed this and gotten in front of it to talk about Jacob Blake? Well, look, I think uh, Republicans as a whole need to do more to acknowledge the great pain and, and the frustration that so many African Americans feel. I mean, look, we, we've had every major sports team walk off. You know, some of this is cultural and political right now, but that's real. They're very, very frustrated. And so, You've got to acknowledge it. I think the question is, what do you do about it? And how do we create a better life for all Americans, but especially people living in inner cities? Just want to stay with you for a moment, Sarah, and talk about coronavirus. Obviously, uh, Mike Pence leads the coronavirus task force. He praised uh, President Trump tonight as we near the death toll of 180,000. How do viewers square uh, the facts of those realities with the praise that we're hearing from inside uh, about President Trump's handling of it? So I think there's there's two things. There's the, the conversation and the rhetoric at the podium, which is sometimes good and sometimes really, really off. Uh, and then there's the facts of what is happening on the ground. I think they think he could have done more to comfort people, remind people to do the smart things to keep each other safe. But the fact of the matter is he is a really aggressive doer. We heard that a lot in this convention so far. You know, he did put together the Defense Production Act. There's no conversation today about people not being able to have a ventilator the way there was in the beginning of this pandemic. Uh, he did rally private companies to make PPE and change their production lines to do that. Um, you know, he's done a lot of things, and he, they are right to talk about the things that they've done well. Democrats have really slammed President Trump's decision to host part of the convention at the White House, calling it unethical and claiming the president is leveraging the powers of his office for political gain. Rob, is it appropriate for the White House to be using the, the, the White House as a backdrop for the RNC, and is it legal? Well, it's legal. It, well, there's going to be a lot of the judges are going to decide that. I don't think it's legal. It's going to happen. We're going to be way past it by the time it's over. I'd like to draw one point here. In 1992, President Bush had a hurricane, Andrew, in, Indi in uh, Florida. The Rodney King, which was the first type of a police shooting, was ever filmed. And you had an, major, an economic recession. So there's an echo of this moment that's facing Donald Trump. We saw Republicans reaching out to women voters with Melania and Kellyanne Conway and White House Press Secretary tonight. Uh, beyond the speeches, Governor, how do you say that President Trump needs to really reach out uh, to, to fix his problem with, with white female voters? Well, I, I think you saw what the vice president was starting to try to do tonight and Melania and Kellyanne a little bit um, as well in the last two nights, which is the only way you win this argument is not based upon Donald Trump's personality. They've already made the decision on Donald Trump's personality. They don't like him. But the question for these voters is, which America do we like better? Do we like an America that Donald Trump is talking about in terms of his economic plans, his plans for education, and others? Or do we prefer the Biden-Harris plan for America? That's our time for tonight. Thanks so much to our roundtable.
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.